it is time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, and this is a time for change. If we take a look at our board, we have just lost the presence of a player, and that means a couple of things. One, we have one less um, actor in our drama that we have see that we see before us, and two, we have a couple of fresh new counter sets that are available for would be emperors and empresses. Um, people who would like an additional. So who would that be? Runt, Flesh, they both still have two. So they would be the ones that are probably going to be starting empires this turn. That's a that's a big change. I mean, two bit, very big changes there. Two, two freed up counter sets and the lack of a player, Little Red. Another big change that's coming up. So this is actually going to be kind of a two-part change that we're going to have um, back to back. As soon as uh, Cowboy's marker, presumably his, I guess he he's in a dark age, so he's not going to automatically um, move forward unless he trades and progresses, moves to here, where our, our game is in the fourth age. That's going to change a lot of things. We're going to be removing this ancient labyrinth, all this stuff. We're going to be moving into the colonial period, I think is what's next. Um, and that's going to... I think change some game rules as well too. I think it might be in the fourth age when this wheat becomes viable um, in forests. Right now only wheat is viable in fertile lands. Uh, there might be some other changes as well. There's a whole bunch more empires that are opened up so it might be incumbent on Runt or Flush to wait to start their empires because you know if they can wait until the fourth age to do it they, they can get maybe something a little stronger. Speaking of Flesh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the choices he had to make as sort of a to, to, to survive as sort of a coda to um, the events of last video. So um, one thing he had to do is he had to get rid of some some nice cards in order to just hopefully draw what he needed. I forget what he one thing he got rid of was the Phoenix card, which is one of the strongest um, cards when you have. Uh, a limited counter sets because what that the Phoenix card can do is you can discard an empire and then start one immediately and that's that's pretty powerful um, especially in this this configuration that that we're working with with the seven by seven ages so he had to give that up another thing he had to do was um, I forget what it was he had to get rid of some some important things. I, I don't remember what it is. Uh, it's sort of a consolation though. He has Southeast Asia to himself, which is nice. Um, other other after effects of the kind of the drama to see who's going to lose. Giraffe, she's in an interesting position here in India. I, I don't know what she's going to do about that. I This is a sort of a different uh, video than usual. I haven't actually chosen what they're going to do for the turn. Um, part of that change I alluded to is I, I just put all the cards the Seven Wonders cards that people had in hand and everything back into a deck, and I'm going to redeal. Um, so she's got to decide what to do in Southeast or in in India. It's probably going to involve discarding an empire. One of the two. I mean, it makes no sense to have these two empires, the Harappans and the Guptas, uh, fighting each other. Um, you know, and I don't see why she's not going to choose the Guptas to get rid of. They they kind of look nice right now, but. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's that's too much of too big of a decision. Um, so let's let's look at this this glory track because this is you know, flush has kind of gotten by on the skin of his teeth twice now. Let's see how what he would have to do in order to <laughs> get by again. I mean, right now, the next person uh, from him is thirty points away. Looks like that's cowboy there, and cowboy's scoring larger. Now flesh does have something on his side, and that's the Japanese. The Japanese are can be very potent. They score on wheat areas. They score. They score on money. They score on water. They have a lot of different scoring opportunities, and plus they have they have a remarkable ability to urbanize, which is which is huge. Usually when when people do the the urbanize right there in the civilized action they can they can either do two fertile areas or they can do one of another terrain type the japanese they can do two of any kind of area so since you know there's not a lot of fertile land out there right most of it's going to be forest or woods or something else um, to be able to do two in like the mountains just pop up two cities that's going to really help their their cities increase which helps in um, defense helps in money making helps in uh, uh, unit production. All right, I'll get to play in now. 
One last thing, I'm sorry, I haven't started playing yet. I wanted to mention getting getting just giving you a big information blob to start off here. Um, although Flush does have 30 points he needs in order to tie Cowboy at this point, he's got some time to do it. You know, we're going, we're not going to have another elimination till right here. Uh, so that's, that's the longest stretch we've had since the beginning, I guess, our first time. This was our first elimination, correct, and this was our second. So that's going to be a good chunk of time which he can maybe build himself up. It'll be interesting to see what happens. We have had one empire begin this turn, and that was an empire of runs. It's the Russians. The reason why she was able to, to present the Russians to the world, uh, which they're normally limited to, to age four, uh, she's currently, the, the, the world is in age three right now, it's because she played a, a time ripple. She used some sort of metaphysical power to do that. Um, why that's going to be interesting is the Russians plopped up right in the middle of Finnish territory here. Fin, the Finns are currently the dominant force in, well, I, I don't want to say the dominant force because there's the Romans over here, but they're having their own problems. I guess the Finns are too. They're both disordered, um, have a lot of disorder. Right in the middle of the, the one of the dominant powers, I guess, in Europe. Um, and so that's going to make things a little more tougher for Milky. He was never scoring a ton off the Finns anyway, but still. Uh, they are that, that, that vaunted black uh, counter set, which I like to talk about a lot. Lots of trading and progressing this turn. No production. I think pretty much everyone chose a trade in progress for one of their people. Before I forget, I always... Gonna move that up, and what I'll do is I'll um, start talking before I've updated everything, and then sometimes I'll forget to do it, so it's good to remember. <laughs> um, anyway, so the trade in prog progressing, the trade in progressing has had a has had a, a much larger effect on the game, given our new system with the dice and everything, because people can actually get something out of the trade in progress beyond just the progress um, and the card that they trade. So uh, we, we're seeing a lot of um, stealing and destruction of the culture cards. A lot of the trade and progress has been um, focused on that. People are wanting to disable each other and take things from people. The Finns have lost a lot as a result. They lost a couple, maybe one card and then one card due to the Muscovites attack or the, the Russians attack, I'm, I, I don't remember, but they've, they've lost some cards as a result of our new system. Um, it also makes it a lot riskier of a proposition. You don't just want to trade because it's not always mutually beneficial. Um, you can actually, I mean, you always get the progress through trade, but you can also get quick, get quite hurt. The Siamese, they lost their one culture card. It was um, some sort of resource in trade, and, and that's going to set them back. And so that's kind of, an, kind of an interesting new twist on it. In, in a way, you kind of want to trade more because you can get more out of it, but you can also lose more out of it. A very repositioning maneuver phase. We saw the Egyptians just kind of spreading out a little bit, just taking more territory. Um, there's still kind of a, a, a standoff here uh, across the, the, the way from Africa to Asia. Neither Runt nor Cowboy really wants to to go into the other area. Cowboy, I mean, there's really no reason to, but they're both worried about the other one at the same time, so they're sitting a bunch of forces there. Uh, that's just kind of how borders are, I guess. Um, Japanese spreading out over here, getting close to Cowboy's territory. Flesh has a couple of swordsmen right on the border. Thought about trying to, to mount a, an amphibious assault, but this one lone guy has... Um, uh, a level three city and a fort to back him up. I suppose you could get a, a catapult in there. It might work pretty well then. Um, but he just doesn't have the forces constructed at this point. Um, big news was the Finns were going to maneuver to kind of deal with some of their disorder this turn and also to, to spread out on their own territory. But the Muscovites, the Russians, right there made that difficult a difficult proposition. So Melky kind of didn't use his turn very much, didn't really do a lot with the maneuvering, didn't count on the starting empire there. Um, did get a boat out in the water and decided to circle the Russians so that if they want to move anywhere, they're going to um, meet up with 
finish opposition. Uh, the most interesting thing that happened during this maneuver phase, we have a lot of people on the trees. Since this is a weekend and my wife has taken my son out somewhere, I have a little bit of extra time to film today. Um, so I think, and also since this is probably going to be one of the last turns where people try to do the ancient labyrinth, I think we're going to do a little competition to see who gets what um, and have a little bit of fun with that. I think this will be nice where it's sort of this, this temporal uh, crossroads. Okay, before I do a shuffling and draw, because this is what I just how I decided I'm going to do it, I just want to show you the platters that I'm going to be shuffling up. So I'm doing three from the ancient age. That's the age we're in. Right, this is kind of our line here for the ancient age. Um, two from the age to come, Yazoo and Box Canyon, and then one from the modern and one from the future for good measure here. And we'll just see where they end up and have an, a, a nice little like mini race for the labyrinth there. Okay, I know that it's really exciting to see people shuffle and draw things because you get to be in on the moment of discovery um, when we're rolling the the shifting die here to see what the terrain is going to be for this great this great um, competition between uh, our different players leaders not everyone's involved um, I think Flush has a, a horse in this race Runt has a couple and I think Giraffe I don't remember who else oh no Melky yeah Melky has his tree man in there alright so here we go Ooh, parking lot. Perfect, perfect. In fact, I picked these specially so that they'd all be perfect, but the parking lot is definitely perfect. Okay, so despite the thematic perfection of this parking space platter, it's not really perfect for Mr. Winter Creek here. Winter Creek really isn't super great <laughs> unless there's some woods, so I don't think Melky is going to be too involved. It's mainly going to be a contest between Runt and Flush. Though it depends on what Winter Creek's card is. I actually don't know offhand what he has. Um, but yeah, he is one of his his horrible speed is offset by the fact that going through woods costs him zero movement, but there's just these sparse trees in the parking space. Maybe that's kind of symbolic too. Um, so we got people rolled in. Everyone ended up in this key here except for Beowulf. Um, so we have Beowulf and uh, Cleopatra, who's a mimic if you recall. Both Runt's characters there. And then we have Roaring Rock, who's flushes, and then the, the, the pathetic Winter Creek here. So pretty exciting stuff so far. <laughs> Actually, so uh, Cleopatra went here. Um, and Beowulf went here, just moved. Roaring Rock, which is Flush's character, went over here and tested positive. He had a choice then of exiting the map, but decided to come back. Reason being, he needs to score points. He knows he needs to score points. What does he have to lose? He has to lose a leader who, I guess, is a strategist and a tactician, maybe useful in the struggle against Cowboy. But... He, he would like to be able to score some points here, if possible. Um, he basically, you know, he figured Cleopatra's there waiting for a reason, and so he he went here to, to try and hopefully jump somewhere else. Um, that did not happen. He rolled himself back here. Uh, Winter Creek didn't move at all. <laughs> she's like, she's sitting right there. What are you going to do? Um, but he's probably going to have to meet, move on his next turn because he's going to move, and it's better if they move at the same time. That's going to let Beowulf go and score as, if he wants. Another turn passed, and here's what it looks like. Uh, Winter Creek did decide to just stay. Um, as did Beowulf. Beowulf stopped right there. Um, Roaring Rock, he made a break for it underneath this tunnel here, hoping that maybe... Cleopatra will wait here for Winter Creek rather than go after him. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, just so you know the turn order, I went with the same turn order we were going with up there. It's uh, Runt, Flush, Milky. Cleopatra jumped on Winter Creek and revealed this laser torch. She's not going to attack him with it. His, uh, so she turned into Winter Creek, essentially. Uh, his react is black, nothing. Um, so it's going to be fairly easy for her to hit him because his attack is white so it's white against black I don't know yeah that's an amaze so the penetr the the t 
to penetrate, it's going to be white against yellow. Now this she could fail at. Um, nope. Winter Creek is going to be dead. There's really no two bits about that, but he gets to attack back because she did attack him. This is essentially happening simultaneously. White against black. Uh, he hits. Now his damage isn't going to be as damaging though. Yellow against blue. And so I think that's probably a failure on that. Um, yellow against blue would be something or other. Eight or so. So it's a failure. So that would be damage minus two, um, I think. And that's not enough. That's going to be nothing. So sorry, Milky, you're out of this one. And unfortunately, Roaring Rock failed. He was trying to skirmish. He was Flush was going to have him escape at that point after he saw the laser torch. So he's right here now. Uh, can't really. Yeah, that's going to be tough for him to get out of this one. But we'll see. This will this will be a fun little chase. And in desperation, Roaring Rock is going to be using this gun at his opportunity to fire before. Um, Ghana can get down here. Uh, his aim is really terrible. It's red. Ghana's stealth is green, so that's going to be hard. She reverted back to her regular form, by the way, so that she could pursue him. Um, Winter Creek's just too slow. And that might have... Well, no, that's not a hit. He misses, and now she's going to attack him with a laser torch. Um, so it's... She, so she gets to turn into him now. It's green against green. Seven, that's going to be a hit. Damage is white against red. Yow. And that's, that. if that's an amaze, he's dead. I, no, he's not dead. He's down to five. Where's, where I should have my little book. Yeah, so he's down to one. He's going to counterattack green against green. Be nice if he had a uh, an item he could use against her, but he doesn't. Uh, that's an eight. Uh, that's a failure. I'm just going to keep rolling this combat because he really can't get away since she is the same speed as him. No, I guess no. I guess he could keep trying to shoot her. That's one thing he could do. Okay. All right. Brown Bess. He's shooting at himself. Yeah, it's too bad. He's a he's a better dodger than she was. And she's him now. And that's a... Yeah, that's a miss. He missed. All right. Green against green. And she hit him. There's... I don't even know if... With, if, if she fops this. No. Nope. Roaring Rock is dead. Very commanding performance by Runt. She has killed both of the opposing leaders. Not really a commanding performance, she just had more stuff to start with. So now they're going to both go in and just be able to adventure. Uh, I could have them move out if I wanted, but I think she's going to just do it that way. And so we'll go up here. She will let, um, yeah, she'll definitely let Cleopatra do this first one. The mental melee atop the Areopagus. Areopagus. That's a seven. She had a yellow against blue. That's a, so. So it's a it's a success. So she won that one, and then the final one. Wow, this is the final one in the stack. We've gone through all the rest of them. The orange knight. So that's going to be yellow against blue. Actually, essentially white against blue. Oh, and that would have been white against blue as well. That was an amaze, I think. Yeah, white against blue, green, yellow, white. No, maybe not. I should just have that book on hand. Where did I put it? Oh, well, we'll roll this one. I'll tell you what that is first. There. Eight. Okay, so she passed this. Possibly amazed that. And that's going to do it for the turn. Everyone's scoring a good amount of points. Over five. I think the lowest is flush with five. He's still down there somewhere. This is how I pick up. Um, yeah. Runt has made it to the end of the track. What I'm going to do... It's sort of just a convenience thing and also as a way that you know, she can't just totally dominate the whole game. She's going to be stuck there until Flush has made it around and flipped his counter over. At that point, um, all of the counters will flip back over and we'll just continue. So essentially, Runt will flip her counter over only to flip it back as soon as she gets a point. Um, that's where we are. Yeah, I mean, Cowboy's still widening the lead. Uh, from flush. Oh, I also cashed out this right here. That's part of 
or no, this. That's part, part of how um, Runt was able to get so many points. So people scored off of that based on how far they were on the track. Um, so you, you essentially get to score twice on those adventures. Once right off as soon as you do an adventure and then you know when you clear off the track as well. So and then you it, you know if you're ahead on the track you also score every turn. Um, lots of changes this turn but lots of staying the same too. It wasn't, it wasn't as big of a change as I thought I think because people didn't want to start empires they wanted to wait until the next age. Cowboy didn't move ahead though uh, Runt thought about trading with him, actually. She decided not to at the last minute and had the Egyptians maneuver instead because she had that card that let her um, create the put the Russians into play right out, right off the bat. Um, but still, we see some, some interesting conflicts that are going to be coming. Coming up, we have this whole Asian situation. I don't know what's going to happen between India and Southeast Asia if, if we're going to see a situation kind of like down here where they just kind of build up along the borders. Same with China here. We have these three big powers. Um, you got to know, though, Flush is going to be coming for Cowboy. So what will that do? I don't know. We'll have to find out next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 Ages.